Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem with series and sequences. So we kind of have S sub n, which means the sum of the first n terms. Sum of the first n terms of a sequence. Okay? In case you didn't know that. And then so S sub n is given in terms of n. And we're supposed to find the, the third term plus the fifth term of this sequence. All right. So that's what the problem is all about. And I'll be presenting two methods. And the first method actually deals with a special kind of sequence, which we'll talk about. And then I'm just going to ask you why that's the case. Something to think about. Okay, so first method. I'm just claiming that A sub n is an arithmetic sequence. Again, I want you to think about it, and that's how you write sequences in general, because when you write A sub n by itself, it just means the nth term. This means the sequence, the whole sequence. So I'm just claiming that the sequence a sub n is arithmetic. Okay? In other words, it's an arithmetic sequence. I want you to think why. Okay, so we have s sub n. What does that tell me? If a sub n is an arithmetic sequence, then I do know the formula for the first n terms. In other words, s sub n for arithmetic sequences is given by the formula a sub 1 plus a sub n divided by 2, which is, by the way, this is how it works. You average the first and the last term in the sum, which pretty much gives you all the terms if they were all equal. Makes sense? So in an arithmetic sequence, you can basically distribute the values. For example, if I have 2 and then 5 and then 8, this is an arithmetic sequence, a finite one, right? If you... Just assume that okay, the average of 2 and 8 is 5, so this is kind of like the same thing as 5 plus 5 plus 5. Make sense? That's how the distribution is made with arithmetic sequences. And then you multiply by the number of terms because this gives you each sum, the average value of each term. Multiply by the number of terms, you'll get the sum. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, this is nice because it contains an n, and we're going to set it equal to what we are given. We were given 2n squared plus 3n. 2n squared plus 3n. Now, hopefully, by this time, this made more sense why it's arithmetic. If you still don't know, please, uh, you know, just write a comment and somebody pretty sure uh, will answer it. Even before you ask, I think I know people will comment about this. So now, what am I going to do with the right-hand side? I have an n on the left. I should have an n on the right. And yes, I can factor this and write it as n times 2n plus 3. That's nice because we know that n is not 0. Obviously, we're kind of talking about the first term, so a sub 1. Well, sometimes sequences, you're allowed to use 0, but I guess that's when a sub n minus 1. Anyways, whatever. So this is the sum, so we can cancel out n. Let's divide both sides by n. And we get something nicer. And let's multiply by 2. So a sub 1 plus a sub n becomes 4n plus 6. Great, but not so great because there are two unknowns, a sub 1 and a sub n. How am I going to solve this problem? I do need another equation or the, one of the values. Well, here's the thing. You don't know what a sub n is yet, but you can find a sub 1. And a sub 1 is the same thing as s sub 1. Why? Because s sub 1 means the sum of the first term which is the first term, because there's nothing else to add. So they're equal. Nice. Great. So and how do you evaluate a, S sub 1? Well, I do have a formula for S sub n, so I can just plug in 1 for n. So S sub 1 is going to be 5. Make sense? Easy. So A sub 1 is 5. Let's plug it in. And then we get 5 plus a n, or A sub n, equals 4n plus 6. From here, A sub n equals... 4n plus 1. So even though we're only being asked to find a sub 3 plus a sub 5, let's go ahead and find a couple terms, maybe the first five terms. How about that? Because that's going to be fun, and it'll also indicate the arithmetic 
ness or arithmeticity of the sequence, whatever, whatever the right word is. So first term, I'm going to replace n with 1, that's going to give me 5. Replace n with 2, that's going to give me 9. n with 3, 13. n with 4, 17. n with 5, that's going to give me 21. What I'm looking for is these two terms, this one plus this one. So the answer is 13 plus 21. And they kind of look like the Fibonacci terms, but this is not Fibonacci, obviously, right? If we skip one, do we, does it become Fibonacci? I don't think so. Anyways, the answer is going to be 34. Okay? Great. So this kind of, well, it's not a proof by any means, but doesn't this kind of indicate the uh, the arithmetic nature of the sequence? Because look at this, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, and there's a reason why it's 4. Think about it. Okay, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the second solution. And please let me know which method you like better. If you ask me, I kind of like the first method a little better because it uses a really nice idea. But at the same time, I don't know. I like both methods, so I can't decide. You will decide. So we are given again as sub n as 2n squared plus 3n. And then we are supposed to find a sub 3 plus a sub 5. In the second method, oh, did I say second solution? Okay, I should be saying second method, not solution, because this is not like, anyways. So, I'm not going to assume anything. Uh, so, pretend I don't know if it's arithmetic or not. This is just a sequence. Well, are there any non-arithmetic sequences that has, or that have, an S sub N like this? That's something to think about. Anyway, so, what can I do to find A sub 3? Well, what is a sub 3? a sub 3 is part of a sum, isn't it? It is. Think about it. a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 is as sub 3. So that's the sum of the first three terms. If you take the first two and subtract, you'll get a sub 3. Great. So you can write it as follows. s sub 3 minus s sub 2 is a sub 3. Make sense? OK, let's go ahead and find it then. What is s sub 3? We have a formula, remember? S sub n is 2n squared plus 3n. Hopefully by this time you memorized it. If you plug in 3, I'm going to get 2 times 9 plus 3 times 3. That's going to give me 11 plus 9, which is 20. Right. What about S sub 2? S sub 2 is 2 times 4 plus 3 times 2. That's 8 plus 6, which is 14. Now I'm supposed to subtract. A sub 3 becomes 20 minus 14, which is equal to... Okay, that we probably made a mistake. A sub 3, let's see, check it out. 2 times 9 plus 3 times 3. 18 plus 6 is not 20, obviously. <laughs> okay, 18, sub, 18, plus si 18 times 9. Okay, it should be 18. Oops. Sorry about that. Let's back up a little bit. Okay, so we're, we're doing 18 plus 9, which is 27. And I'm supposed to subtract 27 minus 14 which is 13. Great. So now, next we're going to find S, S, um, A sub 5. And A sub 5 is actually S sub 5 minus S sub 4. Think about it. The sum of the first five terms minus the first four gives you the fifth. So S sub 5 is going to be 2 times 5 squared plus 3 times 5 minus S sub 4 is going to be 2 times 4 squared minus 3 times 4. This is going to be 50 plus 15 minus 16 times 2, which is 32, minus 12. That's going to be 65 minus 44, and that should be 21. Okay, a sub 5 is 21, a sub 3 is 13, a sub 3 plus a sub 5 is 13 plus 21, which is 34 as before. Great. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.